All right, so this is a video um, about this uh, gossip implementation that I have just made in Python. Uh, technically, I didn't create it completely myself. I uh, I, I just downloaded this uh, to, to view the video before. But this, so I, I came upon this gossip algorithm, uh, you know, implementation in Python that somebody made, uh, except it was very buggy. I, I'm not sure, it just didn't work pretty much. Um, it was very clever the way that he designed it, which we're going to take a look in a moment, but it just wasn't working. Um, and so I also gave my own fixed implementation. I fixed this code. Um, basically, the problem was, uh, you can read it here, uh, as soon as you a, a node sent a message, it removed the nodes from the connected nodes, and then uh, you could only send the message once, which I found pretty weird in any case. This is the fixed uh, implementation. So. To talk first about the um, structure and architecture, so to say, uh, of the um, of the implementation, all the nodes are in a different script. Um, they all import the same class, which is in the gossip.py, um, and they're all created as objects. Uh, they all have their own port, which is basically their own ID. Um, and then you can define which other nodes are connected to. So you can, in every file, you can see they're all connected to different nodes so as to um, kind of, you know, try to replicate uh, a real system. Um, okay, so this is the constructor function inside the, the main. So now we're inside the class gossip node. Um, it's not very important. Um, you can just see that this is where it all starts when it's called. It said uh, it calls a method called uh, start threads, which is at the very, very bottom. Uh, and you can see that it starts two threads, which basically um, it's basically executing two functions at the same time. Um, and I think if we take this through in chronological order, um, it might be simpler to understand. Um, this is actually take two. I'm gonna try to be to explain b uh, stuff better uh, in less time because before I was over explaining. So let's go inside the input message method, which is the very top now. Um, so let's actually start by uh, running, oh God, sorry, running these scripts in all different uh, terminals, I should have done this before, so I'm sorry for that. You can skip this part. All right, so basically what happens is that you have to run all the nodes in different files, be, uh, you know, in different terminals because they're in different files. Um, uh, this, uh, for example, if you send a message in one, you can see that it's being relayed to all the other nodes, right? Um, and it's being done so, you know, in a distributed way. So. This uh, if function, uh, sorry, condition uh, right here is you can see this text up here. I only want it to display it once. So it's just setting a counter. Uh, and when it's more than one, it's only gonna do this once pretty much. This is the uh, input message that you wanna send. And uh, once you've done that, it's going to call the transmit message function with the message as the parameter. Um, so now there's, um, Th there's an important distinction to be made between these two functions. There's a difference between transmitting a message and relaying a message. So transmitting a message is when you actually are the sender of the message. Um, and relaying a message is when you receive a message, but you're not the original sender and you just want to send it to other nodes, right? Because you received it. So that's the difference between the two. Um, and it's important that, um, the timestamp, so th these three lines are basically creating a timestamp or adding a timestamp to the message. And it's important that this is there only inside the transmit message. You can see that actually this for loop and this for loop is exactly the same um, uh, because essentially they're doing the exact same thing, except that here in the transmit message, you wanna add a timestamp so that when you're relaying a message, um, you wanna keep the same timestamp. Before, in, you know, when I was making this, what I did is that the, the mistake I did is that when you the nodes were relaying the message, they were adding the timestamp of when they were relaying the message. Uh, in essence, what this did is that it created an infinite loop. So the nodes kept m uh, messaging each other because the message always looked unique. Um, and so now you only want to add the timestamp of when it was sent and that's it. Um, Okay, so in any case, so this creates the timestamp, adds it to the message, uh, it loops over all the connected nodes, and it sends it to all the connected nodes, right, using this uh, me method uh, of the requests module, uh, sockets module, sorry. Uh, sorry. And then um, 
it calls the, sorry, and then you can remember here that it actually called the two functions at the same time and one of them was the receive message. So nodes are always listening for new messages. Um, and this method right here, the self.node.send2, um, actually is sending to this variable here. So this, this is a, a method that's always waiting for a message. This is a simple condition uh, that basically says, if I ever received this message, um, don't, uh, don't send it, don't relay it again. Right, because essentially at the end here, we're going to receive the message, and then once we receive it, we want to relay it. But we don't want to relay it if this, the previous message is equal to the message that we just received. Right, this is very simply what this is doing. This is a variable to uh, uh, basically store the, um, the ID of the sender, uh, so he who have you received it from, not actually not the sender, but the relayer, anyway, the, the, the node that you received the message from. Um, and I'm not actually using it in this implementation, but it can be very useful for future implementations or, uh, you know, upgrades. For example, if you want to check that uh, if a node has been sending a lot of spam, you want to know who it was. And so you want to store who the previous sender was to make sure that they're to know who, you know, to hold accountable pretty much in case you have to. Um, this is simply the print statements that we just saw here. So receive message from blah, 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 and now it's forwarding it to all of these nodes. Um, so um, anyway, uh, let's keep going. Uh, sorry, I just noticed something here, but I'll check it out later. And then, so if all this, so basically if this condition is passed, then relay the message, right? Which basically in simple words, it's saying, if I haven't received this message, if I haven't seen this message already, then make sure to send it, right? Because that means the other nodes might have not seen it as well. Um, and so this is a loop, you see? Um, basically, um, this continues running until every node has received the message, which is a bit overkill. There's ways to prevent this. Of course, like I said, this is a very bare bones implementation. Um, it's just for yeah showing purposes, actually, exactly what I'm doing now. Um, one thing that I did uh, want to mention in case you want to, you know, uh, read over the script uh, more. When you're reading it, you have to imagine that when you uh, start the function from a node, so say um, you're now in the instance of node 5000, this node is going to transmit a message like I did here. See, 5000 is sending the message. But once you send the message here, the, the node receiving it is, for example, a connected node, so let's say 510, right? So now this receive function uh, method um, is being run not in 5000, but in 510. So you have to think, uh, you know, in, in that manner, if you're reading this file, you ha that's how you have to think. Um, because they're all being run at the same time, which is a, a very weird dynamic, but it's very, it's what makes it very interesting, in my opinion. Um, and... Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. Uh, th there was probably something I forgot, um, but th this is kind of how it works. Uh, I think this script is very simple in a sense, but it does require a bit of knowledge. This is not just a. Uh, you do also have to know how the the algorithm works, um, not uh, the protocol works. So this is why I find it quite kind of interesting because it's an actual uh, implementation of something. So. I hope you learned something uh, and I hope it's useful. It's been useful. I tried to keep it short. So uh, yeah.